I feel offended as a Norwegian American by the Vikings name and logo and mascot. Hey Astrid. Hey loser. You should draw up a petition, son. Will you sign it? Oh no, I like the Vikes. Ban the Redskins? Sweet. <laughs> I'd tap that. Her boyfriend's a Buick. Would you happen to like the thrashing of a lifetime today? Uh, no. Oh, he's a nice man. Will you sign my no Vikes? No. Can I help? Uh, yeah. How are you off? God damn you way. Uh, first off, uh, Tony, Kenny, thank you for, for your time. Thank you for the interview. Uh, uh, just, you know, it, it's, it was good, you know, reminiscing back on when I first watched this movie. It, I mean, it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a movie I, I know a lot, a lot of people relate to it. And it has a lot of stuff that, these are different pieces, different characters that people are going to relate to it. And, and I think, obviously, I, I, you know, it's just so real. In, in the end, everything's just a different characters and pieces of movie that are, that are going on are real and so you know relate relate that to to what's going on today. Um, how did the story came about? Well, it sort of came about. I, I had the the story of the couple, and and the backdrop was always sort of ruminating with me the about the sort of the words, the language, and things like that. And I thought, what if we explore the idea that one-on-one -on -one, people find common ground, no matter what their sort of origins are, where they came from, because people are people. I mean, just, you know, you know, you and I just met a second ago. And if someone said, hey, you guys have to go, you know, move this stuff over here. You and I, who don't know each other, would find common ground, figure out how to move that stuff. And maybe if there were other guys over there moving other stuff, we'd figure out how to do it better than them or whatever. It's just how people are. They become teams. And so... I thought it would be cool to sort of make that the backdrop and then bring in the cause as sort of the way to bring the two together. So because Torvald sees this cause that Ida's on, he's thinking, and she's very earnest about it. He's thinking maybe, you know, maybe she's got a point. And it sort of works off of that. And then he goes to her for help with his cause and then they become pals and off we go with the show. Uh, I want to talk about the title. I think the title is feeling obviously for the story, obviously, and for the cause. I think we, we jump into one of the questions that I had. But that was that the title from the beginning? Because there's two, there are two different things going on. He's trying to basically, basically impress this girl, which is something that all teenagers do typically. So it's that's, that's one part of the story. And then, as like you said, the cause is a, another part of the story, which basically ties into the title. Was that the title from the beginning? Because it's just something that I know, you know, stands out and, and you know, gets your attention. It was from the beginning because Vikes, I thought, would parallel, well, it's the name of a sports team or, or a slang shortening of, a, you know, the Vikings. And I mm -hmm. thought maybe make that the thing that's the theme. People, you know, maybe aren't as offended by Vikes. There's no, at least at this point yet, nobody's pushing to change the Vikings name. But the kid doesn't know that. And he figures, well, maybe these names are, are troublesome. And if people are disturbed by the Vikes, maybe we should change that or just, you know, be proactive and get it out of here before they are, if that may be the case. So that was always the title. I want to talk a little about the casting, which is really good, and, and Aiden and Cindy, who has blown, I mean, he's been blowing up for all, all, all her career, and, and seeing, you know, me seeing back, you know, Miguel Nunez, uh, for, for me, he will always be, you want, you want a man, he hates that, I know, but he will know, always be, do you want a man for me, but how did the casting came about, how did that process came about, and, you know, uh, how, how, do, do, how did the actors fit the roles? Uh, they were, they were great individually, but chemistry really sold it. Put them together and they were, you know, those two, you know, Aiden and Sydney were kind of like pals from the get-go. And it sort of stayed that way, you know, through the show. So it was great. Just, um, they yeah. hit it off. Yeah. Uh, well, how, what about Miguel? What, what, you know, what, what, his, what was his reaction when he saw, his, you know, he has done so many stuff already, but what was his reaction when he saw his character as a mentor, which is something, you know, something else? Nunez. Oh, Miguel, Miguel was, he's part of the conscience of the story. 
See, it, it seems like Aiden's character, Torvald, is sort of central and then swirled around by all these, you know, in orbit with these people who are kind of coaching him along. So he goes to Miguel's character, Manifestus, for help, like he did with Sydney. And Manifestus, if, if somebody asks you for help, it's one of the greatest things you always want to help. You see someone with a flat tire and they're having a tough time with it, you help them out. So that's kind of an icebreaker right there. And then it seemed almost like once um, Manifestus felt, because he, for example, he goes, hey, look, you know, aren't you afraid I'm going to come rob you? Remember when he gives him his phone number? And he's like, no, why would you do that? And he goes, what the heck are you, you know, why would you do that? So trust. So now you've got someone asking for help and maybe naively just trusting a stranger, but he does. And so I think um, uh, uh, Manifestus, he empathizes with that. Um was, was any of the characters, or again, I think I'm gonna come back to Manifestus because to me, he seems like the, the you said, the conscience, the, the guy that's, you know, wants to guide you in the resurrection. Was Ida or Aiden or any or, 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 or character, uh, were any of the characters, you know, uh, uh, inspired by somebody in your, in your life or in your personal experiences? Uh, probably all of them, at least a little bit. Because you take stuff just from hanging around and being around your pals and, and just people in general and, and bring it together, but no one specifically. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, about, about everything, the cause and the story. Uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the movie has so many characters, so, so many things, different pieces moving, that all of them are so relatable. Uh, what, was, was that, you know, going through changing the name of, of the Vikings, you know, was that from the gecko, what the cause that you want to talk about, or there were only some other causes that you just, you, you think that maybe we can go there or, or this way. Well, it was kind of the idea of changing the Vikings that was there from the get go. And then all the people in the periphery served to um, push Torvald through to the end. And, and that's, you know, sort of the way that went. I didn't have the ending at first, had the general idea. And then once I, I came up with what I thought the ending should be, then it just was just fun filling it in from the beginning to that point. And the ending for me, you know, with obviously not getting into the exact specifics of it was that both the kids, you know, both Torvald and Ida have evolved out of, you know, their, what they were messing with at the time and become pals going forward. So it's on to the next thing. The only person who probably stayed within the focus of what they were doing would be Manifestus because that was his job. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that was his occupation. That was his central focus. But, you know, he got a pal out of Torvald too. He's got to bring the umbrella back, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, that's fun. I, the movie from beginning to end is really fun, and it, it has a lot of heart. And again, I think it's relatable to all different ages. We don't have an age specifically, even though you know teenagers are gonna absolutely love everything that's going on. I love everything that's going on to it. Um, was there a specific thing that you found difficult to express during the process of the filming? I'm sorry, was there like a specific scene? Something, something that you wanted to, you know, you put out that you found tough, you found difficult to put out? You know, not really. And I, I'd love to have an answer, although I'm glad I don't, because <laughs> there were no real, real difficulties um, scene-wise. It was a pretty straightforward thing, and, and we just lucked out with no, you know, tough events coming up because, you know, we had three weeks to make it. So fortunately, it was a pretty smooth smooth go of it. Um, final question, and, and I think I'm gonna relate to whatever you answer, but uh, and I think a lot of people can relate to you know, what, we're what we're talking about here with the movie. When people see this movie again, and uh, when, uh, how, how do you speak them, how do you expect them to react to it? You know, three, four years later, you know, it has an age, nothing. It's just still, still as good as it was when it first came out. So how do you expect people to relate to it? Well, I kind of hope they relate to it the same way. Just going forward, it's it's kind of timeless. You know, people 
you know, getting on with each other and, and then juxtaposed to how groups can sometimes be, right? So that'll probably hang with us for a bit. And hopefully, you know, people will look at it and, and get something out of it that, you know, they feel helps them along or get a laugh out of the parts where they should laugh and, you know, maybe have a thought at certain sections too. So, you know, hopefully uh, that happens. And then they realize and it reminds them that they've got pals they can always go to. So no matter like what food group's doing, whatever the heck they're doing, your buddies are there and you're going to find new buddies. And that's what obviously is the cycle of life and what cycles us through and out of different times. Tony, again, uh, I want to thank you for your time. This is a really fun interview, really fun movie. And, and again, really rate that when I'm really real and, and, and it goes with the times. So again, I'm going to congratulate you on, on, on the and on a good film. And, and again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Rafael. And thank you for taking time to take it for a spin. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs>